Why don't we have that same spirit that says, man, I'm going to do whatever. If I don't get my time with Jesus today, I can't function. You can't do what you were doing at 21. You can't do what you were doing at 30. You can't do what you were doing at 40. Now, I can still be highly fruitful and effective and by God's grace feel healthy and great. But if I don't take time to unplug and to plug into God, then I've got nothing to give to anyone else. I've got nothing to give to my husband. I've got nothing to give to my children. And do you notice, I don't, we have got a society that's running on empty. And so people are just short-tempered all the time. People have got zero margin in their lives. And you see it. You see that they're constantly tired. It's almost like a badge of honor. How are you? Tired. How are you? Exhausted. How are you? I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm like, okay, what, what, what are you actually doing? Some of you need to unplug from your Netflix binges. Because it's not always, oh, I'm just too busy for God. No, half the time you're just too lazy and too busy doing things you shouldn't be doing. Just doing things we shouldn't be doing, wasting times. Just wasting a whole bunch of time. But we live in a culture, and especially because we are connected 24-7. And because we've got, you know, we've, we've got our phone there because we're either watching something on a program or we're reading the news or we're scrolling through social media or we're texting with someone or we're FaceTiming with someone. It's just never ending. Never end. The whole world's walking around like this. The whole world, this is it. We, we no longer see people's faces. I mean, have you ever gone to dinner lately and just watch people at restaurants? Yeah. I mean, they've got people right there, and I'm like, they're like this, like this. And I'm like, wow. Can you imagine, like, if a weirdo from outer space came and came and said, I'm going to go to a restaurant and watch all these aliens called humans. Um, I'm going to watch them interact. And they're all sitting around, and nobody's talking to each other. We're all just sitting here, like this, like this, <laughs> all around the same time. But that's what it's like. It's we are constantly plugged in to the point that we're exhausted, to the point that there's no tsunami that doesn't hit that we don't know about in two seconds, no major terrorist attack that doesn't hit that we don't know about in one second. We know what our friend on the other side of the world's doing before they've almost even done it. It's the, You know we're not actually wired up to know so much about so many things all at the same time and then we're wondering why we're so anxious and why we are so exhausted and there's so much FOMO going on and it's so bad. The Bible says that Jesus was having a revival. The crowds were coming. It was amazing. And he went away to pray. He said, uh, you know what? I'll be back. There's more healings to come. There's more deliverance to come because I promise you there's always going to be a need. There's always going to be something that somebody's going to need. There's always going to be something that somebody's going to want. There's always going to be a crisis somewhere. There's, I've had to learn this with work. There is always going to be with 15 officers around the world. There is, it's, somebody's awake. No matter what it is, 24-7, one of my staff in some continent is awake and there's always a drama going on. There's always some, you can't do what I do without there being some major crisis. So if I'm going to actually sleep at night, if I'm actually going to be able to hear from God, if I'm actually going to be able to live a fruitful and a flourishing life and a peaceful life, then you know what? I'm just going to have to flat out unplug from some things so that I can plug into God. And yes, you see me, you go, wow, Chris, you're doing all of this stuff. But can I just say I've got the most amazing team? Can I just say that I certainly don't do it all and there's a lot of things I don't do so that I can do what only I can do. And I intentionally allow margin in my day, in my week, in my month and in my year for time that I am replenishing with the Lord because I am not like some superhero. I too, like everybody else, need to wait upon the Lord so that I can renew my strength. What I do doesn't renew my strength. It depletes me. I love what I do, but it's, that's not the source of my strength. The work that I do with A21 isn't the source of my strength. The work I do with Propel isn't the source. I love this stuff. I love preaching and I love teaching and it's awesome. But the source of my strength is Jesus, not what I do. The source of my strength is not even Nick. It's not my husband. It's Jesus. The source of my strength is not my children. It is Jesus. And if you don't make some time in our chaotic world where someone's always going to text you. There's another party going on. There's another opportunity to do that. If you don't make some time to unplug, then you are going to have a meltdown. And I believe what we're seeing in our world and all the anxiety and all the depression and the hypermedication, not in every case, of course, but in some cases, is purely a result of people's anxiety at being connected 24-7. And I think if we unplugged in some way, some of us are going to find we're going to sleep better. We're going to be able to come off some stuff that we're on because we're just barely getting, we're just trying to get through. And the fact is, if you unplug, there's a whole lot of stuff I don't know. I love the fact 
that I don't stay like absorbed on social media. Now, of course, I post, you all know what's going on and I post inspiration. And a lot of that, you know, I'll schedule and make sure it's out there, but I do not spend my time looking and reading because I get depressed if I do that. Have you ever stayed on Twitter for five minutes? It is depressing. I'm like, no, oh, you know, oh, God, these people are mean. These people are like really angry. It's not good for my spirit. It's not good for my spirit to do that. I'd rather be in the word. I'd rather be listening to worship. I'd rather be doing stuff that is replenishing me on the of course, I what I need to know, I know. I've got a whole staff and a whole team that if I need to know something, Chris, this is what's going on in the world. This is what's happening. But I am not spending my life scrolling through other people's lives. I'm busy living my own life. If you would live your life and stop scrolling through everyone else's life, you might find yourself strengthened and encouraged and filled with the strength of the Holy Spirit doing what you're called to do. So, you know, the crowds gathered. The crowds gathered. But Jesus went to desolate places to pray. I look at this and it says the crowds came. Jesus said to the dude, don't say anything. And the crowds, I think this is the closest thing to going viral before technology. <laughs> I, I think this is how you went viral before social media. Jesus says, don't tell anyone. We're the opposite. We go post it on Facebook, go and do an email blast, go and put it on Twitter, go and put it on Instagram, do a Snapchat, tell the world. But Jesus says, don't tell anyone. And the crowds gathered. And even when something went viral, we would think, good marketing opportunity. This is going to build Jesus' ministry. All the crowds are going to come. This is going to be awesome for Jesus. This is going to be so great. Quick, quick, get the photo shoot out. Get these things posted. It's going to be awesome. And then the crusade will be bigger in Nazareth than it was last year. If, if, and Jesus is like, you know what? This is awesome. I, I'm going to unplug. You all do what you want to do with your crowds. Me? I, I'm going to go and have a chat to my father. I, I need to replenish my soul. All this 24-7 connection, with, it's a bit too much. I, I, I don't want, I'm sure that if Jesus was um, here in this time, he'd be saying, you know, you probably should monitor how much social media time you're really doing, how much screen time you're really doing, how much time are you spending on the internet or on YouTube. You know, you probably need to disconnect. You probably need to set some really strict boundaries for you and for your family about, because so much of the anxiety you're feeling, you don't even realise it's because you're connected 24-7. So much of the depression and the stress that you're feeling, it's because you're connected 24-7. If you would just have the courage to unplug from this so you could plug in to Jesus, you would begin to find peace and love and joy. Come back into your soul, come back into your heart. You would begin to hear the voice of God again. You would sense him in his word again. You would have a lot less stress about things that you're worrying about that you shouldn't even know about. A whole lot of us are worrying about stuff because we are in every else's business. No wonder the Bible says, mind your own business. You would have a whole lot more peace. Man, when I was younger, I wanted to know everything about everyone. Now that I'm older, I don't want to know nothing about anybody. I'm like, and even to my team, I'm like, do I need to know? Do I, I'm, Christine Kane is on a need to know basis. If I don't need to know, I don't want to know. I have just been burnt too much by knowing what I don't need to know. And so I never thought that I would get here, but I am here to testify. I am on a need to know basis. I sleep better. I eat better. I exercise better. I love God better because I don't want to know what I don't need to know. I'm like, knock yourselves out. Knock yourselves out. And so the fact is that if Jesus had to unplug from people to plug into God so he could serve people, how much more do we? We've lost our minds in our generation that we would think we could stay connected to people in the world 24-7 when our own saviour, who was God, incarnate, himself, said, you know what, I'm unplugging. We, we, I've just healed this guy. The crowds have come. Revival has hit, but I am having a break. I'm going off first century social media. I'm going off the grid because I want to tap into my father. And I think if we don't learn to balance, I think in many ways, and um, the blessing of being as old as I am is that I do have a life before the internet. I, I know some of you don't, like my daughter's like, what is that? What does that even mean, mum? Like, mum, what was it like? Literally, my youngest said to me, what was it like living without computers? Mum, how did you live? Like, like, it was just like she just couldn't fathom that you just couldn't go online and order what you want, that you just couldn't talk to someone. In a, it just was not. I mean, when I tried to explain to her what a fax was, what a page machine is, she's like, wow, was it hard, mum? Was it hard? <laughs> I'm like, it was peaceful. It was peaceful. <laughs> But because of that, I have a before and after. The challenge is when you don't have a before and after and this is all you know. 
And so you think, hang on a minute, this is the only way it is. And I'm saying, it is the way it is and it's not going anywhere. And I love it. Anyone that follows me, you know, I keep you all updated and I love it. I love it because it doesn't control me. Yeah. I control it. And I've got some checks and balances in my life for if that gets out of order, I've got some people that are just like, you know what, we need to pull this in a little bit. And, and that's, that's a great benefit. And I hope you've got some good accountability people in your life that will just go, you know what, the reason you've got so much stress is FOMO. I've even taught my daughters. My, my daughter came into my room yesterday and she goes, Mom, I know, I know that I just need to just chill tonight and just kind of stay home. She goes, and I know I've got serious FOMO. But if I just don't look at my phone too much, I'll be better. <laughs> and she's like, so, and I'm saying, honey, it's true. It really is. And she, she knows it. She knows the difference, even at her age as a teenager, that if I spend, I could spend all my time in anxiety on my bed looking at what all my friends are doing and I'm not there. And it can cause a whole lot of tension or I can just put the thing down and just say, you know what? This is going to be okay. And there is life beyond being connected 24-7 all the time. And I hope for some of you watching this, you know, I don't know. There are so many messages that I speak and there's a whole lot more that are a lot more like, wow, let's go, we're going to take the ceiling off. But I don't know that it, there's much else that I'm going to tell you that could be more helpful to you than what I'm telling you right now. Some of you, the anxiety and the stress and the pain that you are feeling is because you have not disconnected long enough with this world and with people to connect with God and you feel like you're missing out on everything because you're not going to the Word to find out what you already have. When you don't know who you have and what you have, you are looking to people to try to get what is never going to ultimately satisfy you anymore. I love social media. I love the benefits of it. I love the connection of it. I love the ability to propagate the gospel. I love that I can keep in contact with friends and family from all around the world. But I'm telling you, the day that it kicks over where you think there's no life outside of that life, when you can't bear, I mean, you are, there are people and, uh, you know, I'm sure that the data and the research is beginning to come in that there would be, um, you know, measurable, quantifiable studies that have been done as to the damages this must be doing to a de generation to be connected 24-7, how that must hardwire our brains, what that must make us expect. It is dangerous. The only way you are going to be conformed and transformed to the image of God is to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. You are not going to be ye transformed by being on social media or the internet or YouTube 24-7. You are going to be transformed by having your mind renewed in the Word of God. It is only the Word of God that will change you, that will transform you. If you abide in my Word, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's not the truth that you don't know that will set you free. It is only the truth that you do know. And if you have got your eyes on this 24 7 scrolling through what everyone else is doing reading through a whole bunch of news which half of it is fake anyway and then going through the whole sort of thing of what's happening and what am I missing out and they're all temporal things that are over in a second anyway you are just going to constantly feel depleted you are going to constantly feel empty you are going to constantly feel like you've missed out you are constantly going to feel like you don't measure up you are constantly going to feel like you are not worthy you are constantly going to be getting more stressed more angry more angry anxious, more feeling like you are a loser. But if you got your face in this book, maybe it's time to get your face off Facebook and get it in the book. And if you got it in that book, you would discover who you are in Christ. You would discover the promises that are yours to grasp in Christ. You would discover that God is for you, that God made you, that God loves you, that you are created in his image, that you have an eternal purpose and that he's got an eternal plan for you. And instead of feeling less than, you would know who you are and you would operate out of who you are and do what God has called you to do. But the thing is that some of us, we've just forgotten how to turn this thing off. We've forgotten what it is to push the button, turn it off and swipe it off. We are people that are running around in the spirit even, in the realm, freaking out all the time. Like we're having conversations with people and we're just thinking, how much charge have I got left? When is this thing going to come through? And then the people are running around. I mean, I watch, next time you go to an airport, have a look, man, you're watching people. They're like, like, I like, ooh, I've got to shout, where is this? Oh, no, I'm running out. Please, do you have a charger? Does this thing work? This one doesn't work. And you watch people, they go cray cray. It's like this, I've, I've tried to plug this in and it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it's not charging. I'm running out, I'm running out and I'm going to get out of juice. Hang on a minute. And you hear them like yelling at each other. Hang on, I'm running out of juice. I'm like, I didn't need to know that from six terminals over. <laughs> 
you met those people on the plane? It's so like, honestly, I'm like, really? I didn't need to know all that about you. We haven't even said hello yet. But anyway, so <laughs> the deal is we're running around freaking out. Imagine if we would put in as much energy and work to think, man, I'm a bit low on my, my Jesus connection. Right. I'm a bit low. You know what? I, I, and that we would have this attitude to, to church and to worship and to the word of God is like, I'm running low. I, I've got to go plug in. I've got to go plug in. I've got to get in with some believers. I've got to worship the King of Kings. I've got to hear the word of God. I've got to be in fellowship. So instead of freaking out because we're not connected and our phone's running out of charge and we're not connected to the internet, why don't we have that same spirit that says, man, I'm going to do whatever it takes. If I don't get my time with Jesus today, I can't function. If it, you know, I'm going to be flat. If I don't get to worship my King, I can't function. If I'm not part of a local church community, I can't function. So you know what? You all can do what you want to do, but I need to plug into Jesus so that my world can function and my life can function in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments, and if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.